thanks. So uh, first, I, I would like to thank the organizer for this uh, uh, wonderful workshop. Yeah, so actually, I visited Vienna a couple of years ago, maybe five years ago. It's a really nice city. So today, I just uh, pretend at Vienna. <laughs> OK, and I give this talk. Um, so uh, I, I, I will talk about this uh, construction and the classification uh, of the so-called symmetry protected topological phase uh, for interacting fermion systems. And uh, I also would like to thank my former postdoc, Qin Rui Wang, and uh, also my collaborator, uh, uh, Yang Chi from Fudan University, uh, and his student for, this, uh, for these uh, few works. Uh, so, uh, yeah, first let me just briefly review the definition of uh, topological phase. So probably uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Xiao Gang and uh, uh, Anton already uh, gave you uh, some introduction. Uh, so it's basically just uh, a gap, the quantum phase, uh, without a symmetry breaking and a long range order, but it still cannot be adiabatically connected to a, a so-called trivial disorder phase. So, uh, yeah, by trivial disorder phase, which is just means a tensor product state or it's uh, atomic insulate. Uh, so today I will talk about uh, symmetry. So yesterday I think uh, Anton briefly uh, mentioned about this uh, invertible uh, topological phase, but uh, still there is no symmetry. So uh, in the presence of symmetry, we can define basically two types of uh, topological phase. So uh, the first type, uh, just the so-called intrinsic topological phase. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, tra our traditional uh, 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 definition of topological phase. Uh, that means uh, uh, there is no adiabatical path uh, to, uh, to connect it with a trivial disorder phase, uh, even without any symmetry. But uh, in recent years, uh, people get interested in uh, the so-called symmetry protected topological phase. Uh, so this kind of particular topological phase uh, is somewhat trivial in the absence of global symmetry. Uh, but in the presence of global symmetry, uh, yeah, they are still uh, have many interesting properties and uh, attracts a lot of research. So, uh, yeah, probably you know some simple simple example like uh, topological insulates, and also uh, many uh, different types of topological superconductors uh, that can be realized in the realistic systems. Uh, so today, today I will talk about this uh, uh, so-called SPT phase in interacting fermion systems. So the setup and the, the language may be a slightly different from those familiar. Uh, uh, language for free fermion systems. So uh, I will first give you a review about this, uh, our current understanding uh, for what happens in, in interacting, uh, interacting boson systems first. So um, yeah, so I also uh, briefly review uh, about uh, Xiao Gang's definition for this uh, topological phase in terms of quantum circuits. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, this is another language that we can just uh, look at this ground state and uh, uh, to understand uh, what is a topological phase. Uh, uh, yeah, if two states describe the same intrinsic topological phase, uh, if and only if they, they are connected by finite depths, local unitary transformation. So uh, local unitary transformation, uh, yeah, here just give you some uh, formula. Uh, basically it's uh, uh, finite depths just means we have finite layer and each, each layer uh, we have, uh, we, can, uh, we can have a, a product of these uh, so-called piecewise uh, Local unitary. So, uh, yeah, each piece just a local unitary trans just local unitary transformation act on a patch. Uh, so, yeah, so so they are all non-overlapping piece. Um, uh, then for fermion system, uh, the only new constraint just uh, uh, yeah all these uh, uh, UI this local unitary transformation uh, they just preserve they they must preserve the uh, fermion parity. So that's the additional. Uh, condition for interacting fermion systems. Uh, so now we come back to the uh, case with symmetry. Uh, so in the presence of global symmetry, we can define the so-called SPT phase or SET phase. Yeah, SET is a uh, further enrichment of this uh, 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 intrinsic topological phase. So yeah, uh, yeah, today I will focus on the simple case for SPT phase. But in terms of this quantum circuits language, uh, uh, we can just uh, define this SPT or SET phase uh, if and only if uh, they are connected by finite depths, uh, symm symmetric local unitary transformation, uh, then we just claim they belong to the uh, same SPT or SET phase. Uh, so here, uh, we impose a symmetry can in a very straightforward way. Uh, for example, if we consider finite group symmetry, uh, then we just uh, can use this so-called group element basis 
and all these quantum circuits uh, can be prim parameterized by this group element basis and uh, this uh, symmetry action uh, can be realized by this group action. So this is the simplest way to, uh, 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 to, to introduce the symmetry for the system. Uh, then, uh, on the other hand, we know this SPT phase, they are just a short range entangled phase. That means without global symmetry, uh, they just attribute. So yeah, here, this circuits, just uh, uh, we go back to the last page, so circuits without symmetry. So that uh, means uh, uh, if we don't care about symmetry, we can just find a local unitary circuits to connect it to, to a, a product, product state. Yeah, so it's just a cartoon here. But uh, for this product state, uh, then we can uh, uh, we, we know uh, it's just have a very, very simple structure and uh, it's a supported space, just one dimension. Uh, but uh, w on the other hand, we also know that uh, the dimension of the supported space will not change uh, on the local unitary transformation. So then we make a, a simple claim. Uh, SPT phase, basically they are classified by equivalent class of uh, symmetric LU transformation uh, with one dimensional support space. Uh, so this becomes a, a guiding principle for us to uh, construct and classify all the SPT phase for interacting systems. Uh, so today I will just use, uh, show how to use this uh, guiding principle uh, to do this uh, uh, construction. Uh, although for the Feynman case, uh, there could be some additional complications. Um, so first let me give you some, uh, uh, yes, yeah, just an uh, idea about how this works for boton system. Uh, I will start from this uh, simplest example. So in this example, we just consider icing symmetry. And we know that uh, uh, for icing symmetry, uh, there are one non-trivial uh, SPT phase. Uh, and it's ground wave function just have a very simple structure. Uh, so we know this uh, trivial icing disorder phase can be regarded as equal with the superposition position of all possible domain configuration. So here domain configuration just means when we uh, flip a spin in this icing uh, basis, then we can just define a domain to, uh, to show this spin mismatch. So, so for any icing configuration, we can, yeah, we can just go to this domain war language. Uh, then in terms of this domain war language, we can just uh, put a minus sign for each domain war. So here, like we have one domain war, have a minus sign, and uh, two domain war, have plus sign, three domain war, again, we have a minus sign. So we claim that uh, uh, such a wave function describes this non-trivial uh, 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 icing SPD phase. And it can be realized by uh, exactly sort of a model, uh, which is just a commuting project of Hamiltonian. Uh, this Hamiltonian is slightly more complicated because it involves uh, seven spin interactions. Uh, it's just a spin flip on this uh, site uh, uh, P, and also there could be an additional phase, of either plus or one or minus one, depend, dependent on this uh, spin configuration surrounding this P. And uh, it turns out all these BP operators, they are just a commute. So it's a still a commuting uh, project to Hamiltonian and we can solve it exactly. And uh, further, we can imagine that uh, uh, we can couple it to a Z2 gated field. And then we can um, uh, justify whether it's indeed a non-trivial phase by studying this uh, uh, gradient statistics of the gauge flux. It turns out in this case, uh, uh, the gauge flux carries semi on statistics. And, uh, uh, we also know that uh, this kind of uh, non-trivial twisted gauge theory uh, can be classified by the third group of cohomology uh, of the corresponding gauge group. And uh, yeah, that's the early results by dagorff witten It's called the dagorff witten gauge theory. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, once we establish this connection, we know this group of cohomology is very powerful and useful too uh, to understand these SPD phases. Uh, so today I, I will try to uh, uh, yeah, use the, directly use this uh, so-called uh, SLU transformation uh, to understand why this uh, HRAP3 plays the essential role. role. And uh, then I try to go to the uh, interacting Feynman case. So uh, yeah, in this uh, setup, uh, I want to study uh, the so-called ground state wave function uh, for arbitrary branch triangulation. Uh, so as a fixed point wave function, we believe that uh, the shape and the geometry of this lattice is not important. So that means we can define an arbitrary triangulation. So here we use the so-called branch triangulation. It just means we have some additional uh, structure here. Uh, basically, it's just an arrow structure. So this arrow structure uh, makes sure that there's no oriented loop on the graph, uh, such that we can also make a local, we've always make a local ordering for these group elements. So now we, in, in this cartoon, we already use the group element basis. So you can imagine, for the icing case, this group element just uh, labeled up and down. 
Yeah, but for generic finite group, it's just arbitrary group elements. Uh, then basically we, we have some coefficients uh, for any given uh, basis. So here I, I also want to emphasize this kind of fixed point wave function. Uh, it's uh, defined for, uh, basically it's defined for dynamic lattice, which means uh, I have a superposition of all possible triangulation. And for given uh, triangulation, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, include all configuration for all possible uh, 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 group elements label. So you, you can imagine it's a really very, very big wave function. But for a realistic system, you can always choose to project to any kind of regular lattice. And then you can write on this uh, exact solvable uh, commuting project harmony. Okay, so uh, now we also introduce uh, two types of uh, fundamental uh, symmetric LV transformation, which generates all the randomization group uh, flow. So, so, so here we also call it retriangulation because here for this graph state, uh, renormalization uh, basically can be realized by retriangulation uh, because uh, uh, yeah, uh, here, of course, we consider the generalized retriangulation, which also allow, allow us to uh, ch change the number of vortices of this uh, uh, triangulation. So, so there are two types of basic patch move. Uh, so the first type is very familiar, just this called, called a uh, two to two move. So, so, so in this two to two move, you can imagine I have two wave function. Uh, their neighbor uh, are all the same. So that's a part I did not draw here. Yeah, um, and uh, they only differ by this local patch, uh, but uh, because they belong to the same phase, so they just be uh, connected by some LU transformation, and it's actually a symmetric LU transformation. And also uh, because this support dimension is one dimensional, so there must be a U1 phase actually. Uh, and this U1 phase, uh, uh, it's symmetric under this group of symmetry action. Yeah, just uh, with, with times G for each group element, it's symmetric. Uh, so here you see it at the most, it can be a function of four group uh, uh, elements because uh, in this uh, basic retriangulation move, only involves these four group elements. So the outside region is not important. Uh, and also we have this, two, uh, this type of so-called two to zero move. So this kind of move can uh, reduce this vortex number by two. Then uh, uh, yeah, with this additional move, we can actually uh, 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 relate to this uh, amplitude for triangulations with different number of vortices. Um, and this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, this just uh, uh, the, the, the order of the group time, and this is just a normalization factor uh, to make sure this uh, uh, wave function is uh, uh, properly normalized for any uh, given triangulation. Uh, next, we uh, consider this so-called uh, consistent condition. So that's a very important condition because uh, uh, as a fixed point wave function, uh, suppose we have a bigger patch and we're starting from the, uh, this big patch. Yeah, again, we assume the outside region, all these group elements, all the configuration, they're just exactly the same. And then they, we, we, we apply this uh, uh, symmetric LV transformation with different paths and end up with uh, uh, a final uh, configuration. Yeah, just uh, this patch. So if we choose different paths, uh, they must give rise to the same amplitude. So this is sometimes we call a coherence condition. And uh, yeah, if, if you're familiar with the pencil category series, just a, a, a simple realization of this pentagon equation. And uh, here, uh, this turns out to be exactly this so-called co-cycle equation uh, for group cohomology. Uh, so yeah, this is three new is the lower pass, this three new is the upper pass, so they must be equal. And we can just use this short notation d nu uh, to, uh, to, to de denote this complicated equation. And uh, uh, also, uh, we have the freedom uh, to change this local basis because for each group element basis uh, defined on each triangulation, we can always add a freely to add a phase factor uh, to as a change of local basis. And such kind of local basis change, uh, 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 a change corresponding to the so-called co-boundary condition. Uh, then we find this quotient group, uh, this uh, order solution satisfy this co-cycle condition and the quotient by this co-boundary group uh, give rise to this so-called uh, cohomology group, uh, the third cohomology group in this case. So it classify all this, uh, uh, SPT phase in two plus one D four uh, interacting boson system. Yeah, so that's a, a basic story. But uh, we can also generalize into uh, into three dimension, 
and uh, uh, yeah, I just don't uh, have time. But uh, uh, but uh, but I think you can you can imagine and you can yeah just do do this triangulation for three dimension and uh, yeah you can end up with a hexagon equation uh, which is uh, uh, just uh, this fourth cycle uh, uh, equation, and then we have fourth cohomology class. Uh, yeah, so it's a very systematic construction in arbitrary dimension. Uh, now let me just switch to the Fermat system. So for Fermat system, we have some uh, brief understanding uh, based on uh, many of the previous work. Uh, so the obvious way is just this reduction of a free Fermat system, uh, yeah, which give, give rise to some understanding of interacting Fermat system, but it's still not incomplete. Uh, of course, uh, the stacking of a Bolognic SPT phase on top of a free Fermat SPT phase is another way to consider some new phases, but uh, again, it's not uh, complete. Uh, and also, uh, this is spin cobaltism and invertible TKFD framework work uh, proposed by Anton Kapustin and uh, uh, Dan Fried. Uh, also, very powerful uh, tool to get a complete classification. But uh, uh, yeah, as a response theory, uh, we don't know how to explicitly convert all these uh, uh, lattice models for uh, SPT phase in interacting Fermat system. So that means uh, we still need some uh, yeah some additional uh, uh, tool to have a complete understanding. But the hard part is that that because this fork space structure uh, makes this uh, uh, yeah the both the symmetry action and the topological phase uh, become rather complicated. So uh, it's not easy uh, uh, to handle. So uh, at the beginning, so that's why we spent so many years uh, uh, finally to solve this problem. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me just uh, review some basic uh, idea uh, for inviting Fermat systems. So for one dimensional inviting Fermat systems, because we can apply this drawdown down uh, transformation, so basically they, they can uh, be mapped into a bosonic system and the problem is easy to solve. And for two dimensional system, we also have some uh, good understanding uh, ba based on this uh, uh, we yeah, have very powerful mathematical framework in uh, two dimension uh, for this all possible uh, um, stat, uh, to study this all possible statistics of the gauge flux. Yeah, and also there's a very uh, a powerful mathematical tool like the G cross intense category theory and uh, they, they can be applied for understanding this two dimensional case. Uh, uh, but uh, this most hard part is the three dimension. And uh, we have some uh, attempting to understand this three-dimensional case uh, previously, uh, just uh, formally by generalizing uh, this so-called uh, group cohomology theory to the so-called yeah, special super cohomology theory uh, by uh, uh, by grading this U1 phase vector uh, with some Grassmann variable. So it's a formal generalization, and the understanding is still incomplete. Uh, but now we have a better understanding uh, in that. Uh, kind of uh, um, uh, generalization. Uh, basically, we're just dec decorating complex fermion on the intersection points of the symmetry domain. So in terms of this uh, uh, fluctuating domain wall picture, uh, yeah, uh, we have much better understanding. Uh, so today I will, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, still based on this so-called fluctuating, fluctuating domain wall picture uh, as what we do for the bosonic system. And the, Key in the, in the greens uh, is just uh, by adding this so called uh, PDF's migrant chain decoration uh, on symmetry domain wall uh, or on the uh, intersection of uh, uh, three dimensional symmetry domain. Yeah, because in three dimension, the symmetry domain is, uh, is a memory. Uh, then we can have a complete understanding for Fermanic SPT phase, uh, at least for unitary symmetry. Okay. Uh, it, it, if there are any questions, uh, 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 that's a basic idea. Uh, now uh, I'm going to some uh, technical part. So uh, the first thing is that uh, we try to understand what is the symmetry group uh, for Fermat. Uh, I'm sorry, a non-math question over here. Zhen Chang, um, um, could, you, could you make me a host so that I can do a YouTube stream? Oh, um, oh, oh. You, you are now the host. Um, okay. and, and I found out that only hosts can do this. <laughs> oh. And, and you, you can go to the bottom participant, click on that, and you okay. see a lot of names. You find my name, which is CC Zhu, and you click on more, and uh, um, you can make 
make her host in the host, right? I, I, yeah, I just exactly. Okay. Sorry about okay. this. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Just continue. I okay. I will make you a co-host. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so now let me uh, go to some uh, technical parts. Uh, yeah, we already have some uh, basic uh, uh, physical picture because this fluctuating domain is a very powerful uh, way to understand this uh, uh, SPG phase for interacting bosons system. And uh, there's a, a one uh, very straightforward uh, relation to this uh, cohomology class. So we, we just try to uh, apply a similar scheme uh, to understanding this uh, SPG phase for interacting Fermion system. Uh, and the first, uh, uh, yeah, there's some additional complication uh, for this uh, fermion system symmetry, uh, GF. Uh, GF is, is a so-called total symmetry of the fermion system. And uh, 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 it's complicated just because, uh, um, yeah, for fermion system, uh, we, we know that uh, we have like a spin one half system, right? And uh, for example, we have a time reversal symmetry, it's a square root minus one. So that means this uh, time reversal symmetry as a Z2 anti unitary symmetry uh, just not, uh, it's not a simple tensor product with the Fermi parity symmetry. Uh, it's actually in mathematical, we, we call this, uh, yeah, a non trivial center extension uh, and uh, specified, uh, specified by this uh, short exact sequence. And uh, uh, in this short exact sequence, we can just uh, introduce uh, uh, omega 2, uh, which also belongs to this uh, second group of homology uh, with C2 coefficient to specify in equivalent uh, uh, GF. So yeah, this is a piece of data uh, we must uh, incorporate for this uh, for, uh, very generic Fermat systems. Uh, so for example, here, if we think about this, uh, uh, um, yeah, this symmetry action of this total group, uh, for example, we have a total group with Fermat parity elements and the GB is a bosonic uh, symmetry, it's a physical bosonic symmetry. Uh, then we, we, we do this multiplication, uh, this Fermat parity, uh, Part can be twisted by this omega two, yeah, and the omega two always satisfy this uh, co-cycle equation because it's belong to this uh, uh, second group homology class, and uh, uh, it's also easy to check uh, omega two uh, with E is the uh, identity in the group, and G is some arbitrary group element. Uh, it's always equals equal to zero. Uh, can I ask a, a question, please? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, so what is this? Uh, N of G uh, in your superscript to the uh, like a PF operator. So what is this uh, NG or NH? Oh, yeah, this uh, this NG just uh, just uh, just means that you can choose zero or one, right? Uh, for a Fermi parity group, you can have one Fermi or zero Fermi. Uh, so you 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 assign a zero or one to each uh, group element, right? Yeah, yeah. For the just a Fermi Z2F, yeah. C to F. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a non-trivial twist. You, you will see it. Uh, there can be uh, additional omega two contribution, which also valued on zero one. So yeah, uh, that's why you can have a T squared minus one uh, for 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 certain for 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 example for spin one half Fermi system. Uh, that's just because it's non-trivial omega two extension. Uh, okay. After we understand these basic points of uh, Fermion symmetry group, uh, then we can go to the uh, next stage. Uh, so again, uh, we use this uh, so-called uh, decorating domain wall picture uh, to understand all these uh, SPT phase for interacting Fermion system. So, so in this cartoon, you will just uh, see, uh, in addition uh, to this uh, uh, bosonic case, we just put uh, some uh, blue dots here, also put uh, some green line here, uh, so this blue dots just means uh, decoration of a complex fermion on each center of this tri triangle. And this uh, uh, green line here, uh, yeah, basically just the decoration of this modern chain on the domain wall. So yeah, here just to summarize uh, uh, the degree of freedom we, we have. Uh, so just as this bionic system on each vertices of the triangle, uh, we still have bionic spin state yeah, the, the, the number of these states just the order of the uh, group GB. So GB is uh, a physical symmetry. And, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, because we have a non-trivial omega-2 extension, uh, so the most uh, construction requires the GB species of complex fermion, as well as GB species of uh, 
uh, yeah, com a complex fragment on the edge, which will uh, split into a so-called Magellan fragment uh, uh, later, uh, which can then form this Magellan chain decoration on the, on the domain. Uh, so the splitting, uh, yeah, just uh, here. Uh, for any uh, complex fragment, we can always uh, split into a pair of uh, Magellan fragments. Uh, so um, maybe some of you are not quite familiar with this Magellan chain, so let me just give a brief review. Uh, so yeah, just as uh, I uh, mentioned, for this complex fermion, I can split into this uh, a real Magellan fermion and a real Magellan fermion uh, just to satisfy this Clifford algebra. And uh, we will see uh, in this so-called P-wave superconductor in one dimension, uh, this Magellan fermion just, uh, in terms of Magellan fermion, just have a very simple uh, uh, formulation, just this Magellan hopping Hamiltonian. And uh, it's uh, uh, representing a non-trivial one-dimensional uh, immutable topological phase, uh, which is actually the only one-dimensional uh, immutable topological phase. Uh, that's why it's very unique. And we can decorate on the uh, domain of the um, usual bionic SPT phase. And uh, I also would like to mention this complex Fermi decoration, also very natural because it's a zero-dimensional immutable uh, for a manic SPT phase. So we can decorate on the intersection line, uh, uh, on the intersection point of the domain. So uh, there's also some additional uh, uh, complication uh, when we're considering this decoration, uh, so-called this custom orientation. So for a graph with edge orientation, uh, the number of clockwise oriented edge at every phase uh, boundary is odd. Uh, then we call it its custom oriented. So that's just uh, yeah, just like this convention, and uh, uh, and uh, this kind of issues uh, or uh, subtle details is important, uh, just because uh, uh, two Majoran dimer states can have the same Fermi parity if and only if the transition graph is uh, custom oriented. So for example, here I show two cartoons, and this arrow actually represents how we order this gamma two g and gamma two g plus one. And uh, in one cartoon, it's a so-called periodic bonding condition. The Magellan chain ground state have Fermi parity odd. And in this cartoon, it has a Fermi parity even. It's an anti-periodic bonding condition. So yeah, yeah, if you're not familiar with this so-called custom orientation, you can uh, just uh, regard this as different types of bonding condition. Uh, but when we uh, do the decoration, we can only decorate this Fermi parity even uh, Magellan chain ground state. Because if it's Fermi parity odd, uh, then, by definition, uh, it's not allowed because, uh, yeah, uh, because for any SPT phase, uh, the, the Fermi parity must be even because uh, we can always use a local unity transformation uh, to relate it to a trivial state. So such kind of decoration is not allowed. So, yeah, of course, you, you, uh, mathematically, uh, such kind of decoration will viol violate this uh, custom orientation, and only this kind of decoration. Uh, satisfy the custom orientation. Uh, so now you will see that uh, if we want, really want to do this decoration, there are some additional details. Uh, so, so this detail, I think, uh, yeah, also I already uh, show here. You will see some red arrow. So this red arrow actually, uh, it's uh, uh, just uh, uh, discretize the realization of this uh, spin structure on the two-dimensional lattice. So you can do this uh, for arbitrary dimension. Uh, so this kind of error set is one uh, allowed uh, uh, or possible uh, setup for this uh, positive oriented triangle, and this is for the negative oriented triangle. Uh, you can choose uh, some different uh, uh, error pattern, but they are yeah, kind of gauge equivalent. Hmm. Uh, so now we can try to put this data uh, onto the lattice. And, uh, yeah, here, if we consider the anti-unitary symmetry group, we need some additional complication uh, because uh, for anti-unitary group elements, we need uh, additional H upper one GBZ2 data to specify which group elements is unitary, which is anti-unitary. So that's why for generic symmetry, for example, time reversal symmetry with T squared minus one, the omega two is non-trivial and S1 is also non-trivial. So that's why for this uh, interacting frame system, the story is complicated because uh, uh, these two additional data cannot be avoided. And now we can just uh, go straight forward with the symmetry transformation because we know this uh, complex fermion C, uh, yeah, which is decoration on the center of the triangle, uh, transform projectively on, on the symmetry group. So we have this minus one omega two uh, vector. 
And similarly, for all these Majorana fermions, we, we can also have this uh, minus uh, one omega two factor. Uh, but there's a tricky part that, uh, uh, yeah, in our construction, uh, if we have this, uh, uh, you know, uh, gamma A, gamma B is uh, splitting uh, from this edge complex fermion. But for gamma B, we must uh, put an additional sign if it's anti unitary group symmetry. Uh, just because this, uh, um, yeah, uh, when we define this uh, uh, complex fermion, um, the fermion parity operator involves this i, right? So uh, then this i goes to minus i under anti unitary symmetry. And then we want to this fermion parity does not change under anti unitary symmetry. So that's why on this, uh, uh, on this, uh, yeah, this for this B fermion, we always require this uh, uh, gamma B go to minus gamma B, yeah, uh, for under this anti unitary action. So that, that's an additional uh, minus S1 factor here. And uh, then we can look at this decoration data. Uh, all the equivalent decoration data just described by this, again, it's belong to this uh, uh, H of one GBZ2. Yeah, just means uh, whether we have a decoration or not. Yeah, basically, this is very simple, uh, similar as this S1. Just uh, choose a Z2 subgroup for any given uh, GB. Uh, so this cartoon just uh, show that uh, in some cases, uh, we will must have a Fermat parity violation, or we must violate this custom orientation on certain uh, uh, link if we have a modern chain decoration. Uh, so, so we can specify that there is no Fermat, uh, uh, no modern chain decoration if we just pair the AB cross a link. Yeah, just like here, here, here. Uh, yeah, just like here. So, so, so if A, B cross link uh, the two Majorana pair, we call, call the vacuum pair, just means we don't create a Majorana chain. So, so it's a trivial state. But when, uh, when this, uh, um, yeah, this two Majorana fermion uh, belong to two different edge, they pair up, uh, then we have a non-trivial Majorana chain decoration. So in these cases, there's a potential uh, Fermat parity violation. So here, just to show you uh, one example, and I will show, show you how to compute this factor later. So here, just uh, in, in uh, just uh, yeah, demonstrate this uh, uh, basic idea. Uh, the Fermat parity violation is possible uh, in a generic uh, uh, decoration with non-trivial omega-2 extension. Yeah, uh, of course, when omega-2 is uh, trivial, uh, you will not see such kind of cases. Uh, and we also have a convention, um, yeah, whenever uh, we form this modern chain pair, uh, we, we, we only use this uh, uh, gamma GI uh, for each corresponding link. Yeah, uh, for example, this from G0 to G2, we only use this G0, gamma G0. Here we only use this gamma G1. Here we only, again, only use uh, this gamma, uh, uh, gamma G0 if they want to form this uh, modern chain. So that's just a convention. Uh, so in the next stage, uh, we uh, try to compute this uh, uh, yeah, fermion parity change in the most general case. And uh, uh, we can start in from this uh, uh, so-called reference pair. So for any reference pair, just means this, uh, uh, yeah, this E just the identity element in the group. So uh, we just, Check up this kind of pair as a so-called reference pair. As, as long as one Majorana fermion fermion um, uh, has a label uh, belong to this identity uh, group element, then its fermion parity is always uh, one. Uh, once we fix this uh, reference pair, then we can define the uh, fermion parity uh, for other pairs uh, by just uh, applying this symmetry action. Uh, for example, uh, if we consider this uh, pair, Across a link, it's always an AB pair, right? So in this case, uh, it's very straightforward to check that uh, under this uh, any kind of uh, symmetry action uh, G zero, uh, it does not change. Yeah. So 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 here, the, there's no Fermat parity change. And uh, and the, uh, I also define this as a so-called uh, um, projection operator for my ground chain because uh, the ground state can be uh, generated by yeah by applying this. Uh, projection operator on the vacuum. Uh, because this Majorana chain on the just a commuting project. And then we can also uh, uh, also do the uh, similar things for this uh, uh, three pair. So this three pair is very crucial 
because uh, when uh, when the Magellan chain pair up on these three links, uh, we can have a non-trivial declaration because this, uh, if we only have a pair across the link, it's uh, always a trivial, uh, yeah, it's always a trivial declaration uh, which cor corresponding to this vacuum pair. So only uh, uh, they pair upon this small triangle uh, leads to non-trivial declaration. And then we can compute their symmetry uh, action. So for this uh, reference configuration, uh, we just fix this starting point of the triangle, uh, always have this identity group elements, right? Uh, then we can apply this symmetry action. Uh, then this uh, point become G0, which is uh, some arbitrary group elements. Uh, and uh, uh, then we can compute this Fermi parity change for a given uh, configuration. Uh, yeah, for example, we fix the G0, G1, G2, uh, three group elements. Uh, so we'll see, uh, for this first pair, uh, yeah, uh, G0A, G0B, yeah, this pair, uh, it's very easy to compute by, by using this relation. Uh, you will see there's no Fermi parity chain. Uh, but uh, for this pair, uh, uh, yeah, gamma G0B and gamma uh, G1A, uh, there's a potential uh, Fermi parity chain. And that's exactly this uh, omega 2 uh, G0, G0 inverse G1 factor. And uh, similar, we can compute this pair. So this pair, actually, uh, you will see, because it's an AA pair. So uh, we also need to change this, this I to minus I if it's anti unitary symmetry. So that's why you will see this additional uh, S1 G0 con uh, contribution uh, if we consider this kind of pair. Uh, OK, finally, we just uh, summarize this uh, uh, all possible Fermi parity change uh, for a given uh, triangle, for a given set of group element, G0, G1, G2. Yeah, so once we fix this group element, uh, then basically all this uh, um, decoration pattern is fixed. Yeah. So uh, we'll see uh, the first piece of data uh, contribution uh, basically is just omega two uh, times this two N one. Yeah, uh, why we uh, apply this two N one simultaneously uh, non true just because uh, yeah, we only, when we consider the case, the Majoran chain crosses two link uh, which is N02 and the N, uh, N1, uh, uh, one, one, two. Yeah, for this two link, both N1 is one, then can have a non trivial contribution. So that's why we have the product here. Uh, it's similar for this uh, blue arrow, we also the product here. And finally, uh, for this uh, time reversal, uh, action S1 also require this two link non uh, trivial. Uh, so finally, we can just uh, summarize it in a, a nice and a compact formula. Uh, yeah, as uh, omega 2 couple n1 and plus s1 couple n1 couple n1. So yeah, that's a short notation uh, in terms of couple product. But, uh, all, uh, but the, the physical origin uh, can be just uh, read out from this figure. Uh, so yeah, this is the most uh, uh, complicated part uh, of this calculation. And once you understand this part, then the uh, rest of this calculation will be straightforward. Uh, for, for example, uh, we can consider the uh, F move in this case. Uh, or retriangulation move. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, just a pattern move, similar as uh, what we do for the Bolanic case. Uh, so this is just an example of this two to two move. So we uh, assume the outside the patch, they are the same, just that we change this locally. But uh, of course, for a Fermat system, this changing can be complicated because uh, once we do this retriangulation, re this complex Fermat decoration can be changed. So we annihilate some Fermat here and create some Fermat here. And we also change this uh, uh, Majoran chain decoration. We annihilate the Majoran chain here and uh, create a new Majoran chain here. So we need uh, all, we require all this uh, project operator to annihilate and create a Majoran uh, to create a Majoran chain. Yeah, um, yeah but, uh, but uh, there's some additional complication uh, that uh, because uh, sometimes it's possible to have a, a non trivial Fermi parity chain. Yeah. So this Fermi parity chain is summarized at here. Uh, I will show why we, 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 we uh, uh, yeah, what's the precise expression of BN2 will be, uh, uh, will be shown in the next page. So, so once we have Fermi parity change, uh, then we must uh, add an additional uh, Majoran operator here to change the Fermi parity, uh, such that uh, when the projection acts on the uh, state, uh, it does not vanish. So uh, this additional Majoran Fermi is also very important. 
Okay, so in the next page, we will uh, show this uh, uh, complex symmetry transformation. Um, so here, again, we just choose a reference uh, graph for the F move. Uh, you will see for, for this point, it's just the identity group element, uh, which is choose to be uh, fixed. So uh, then we can think a more gener generic configuration just by act this, uh, uh, apply this group action. Suppose we apply G0 for all these four points, then we just get the most generic uh, yeah, F move or patch number move. Uh, we uh, parameterize with the most generic group elements. So again, we can just uh, apply this uh, symmetry transformation uh, uh, to, to get this uh, uh, most gem generic patch number move. And uh, uh, it turns out, uh, yeah, yeah uh, here, uh, we need uh, this precise formula of the DN2. And the DN2, uh, by the short notation, is just a summation of all this Fermat parity of, the, of this uh, uh, four complex Fermat. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, a parity change of this uh, complex Fermat. And it must balance this Fermat parity change uh, produced by the Magellan chain uh, Decoration. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, a, a pre precise the formula here. And also, uh, there's also some additional uh, complication uh, such that uh, if we want to a uh, symmetric LU transformation, this new three uh, must also uh, change in some complex way uh, such that the total F symbol is symmetric. So, so this additional uh, factor I will show you in the next page. Uh, just because all these Magellan chain operator and the complex Fermat operator, they can change it. Uh, yeah, they can contribute to some non-trivial or negative factor uh, on the symmetry action. So we need to incorporate such kind of chain. And this uh, one minus two S one, just because if it's anti unitary then this new three just becomes uh, a complex candidate of new three. And this uh, total Fermat parity change can be uh, computed straightforwardly uh, from the Fermat parity change for, for a single triangle. Yeah, it's just a summation of a four triangle. So you will see it exactly take the uh, same formula. Uh, here we already have omega two, uh, cup, uh, yeah, uh, cup N1, S1, cup N1, cup N1. But you will see here this group of uh, uh, elements just a G0, G0 inverse G1, G1 inverse G2. After the summation of, uh, of four and uh, make use of this uh, co cycle condition of this N1, S1, you will see. Uh, what you get is just exactly the same formula, but with the uh, argument uh, G0 minus one, G1, G1 minus one, G2 and G2 minus one, G3. And you will see uh, such a factor actually is symmetric on the group uh, action. And uh, finally, we end up with this uh, most important uh, HF3 of fraction function uh, for my run chain decoration. And uh, it's, uh, it's a symmetric function on the group action. And uh, uh, we will see uh, for for example, for time reversal, uh, t squared equal to minus one, uh, both omega two and s one is non-trivial, and n one is also non-trivial. So so the whole thing is uh, uh, it's uh, still it's a co-boundary. So such kind of decoration is allowed. But for t squared equal to plus one, uh, omega two is trivial and s one is non-trivial. Then we we will find an obstruction, and such kind of modern chain decoration is not allowed. Uh, so in the next page, we can do a similar kind of uh, coherent condition for the Bolani case but uh, with much more complicated uh, phase factor will be generated uh, from this pentagon move because we not only move this uh, complex fermion, we also move the Magellan chain. So we can summarize it as uh, four pieces of uh, uh, complex phase, uh, which is uh, rather complicated. And uh, yeah, I just use a shorter notation of for, uh, higher couple product, uh, yeah, which just involve a couple of terms. Um, and, uh, and this is the most uh, uh, general uh, complex function uh, can be generated from this kind of uh, uh, yeah, pentagon move. And it uh, defines this so-called twisted uh, three co-cycle equation. Uh, so finally, uh, let me just uh, briefly summarize the data for this uh, classification of uh, two-dimensional uh, Fermi SPG phase. Uh, so first uh, we have this Magellan chain decoration uh, uh, labeled by the data of N1, which belongs to the H of one uh, GBZ2. And then we can have uh, uh, N2, uh, which is a co-chain, uh, um, and uh, also new three is also a co-chain. And then we can define this uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, generalized co-cycle condition. 
So for N1, we just require DN1 equals zero, which is a normal cycle condition because we require the migrant chain must be closed. And DN2 satisfy this so-called obstruction free uh, generalized cohomology condition. And then this uh, uh, new three, uh, D new three must also satisfy this twisted twisted cycle condition. Uh, so yeah, the, the, uh, both of these two equations uh, uh, Define this so-called generalized cohomology, and uh, there's a twist uh, comparing to this uh, usual cohomology data from uh, H upper two and H upper three. Excuse me, but uh, there's uh, some Can additional. You... Uh, okay, I, I just have a question. question. Can you remind me what, what what gamma was? Oh yeah, yeah. I will show you in the next. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So gamma. Yeah. Gamma two and gamma three is actually some additional uh, co-boundary condition we must uh, introduce for Fermat system. So I did not have time to discuss here. But uh, uh, physically, omega two, you can just imagine that uh, on the boundary of, uh, yeah, on, on the boundary of a triangle, you can decorate some uh, Majoran chain, uh, and uh, and then you can you can you can generate generate some additional complex Fermat configuration, uh, which can trivialize. Uh, Part of this uh, uh, HR2 data, yeah, belong to the complex Feynman declaration. And this gamma three basically is a trivialization of some uh, bosonic uh, uh, SPT phase if you embed it into inviting Feynman systems. So, uh, so yeah, so the, that's a physical meaning of this gamma two and gamma three. Uh, so, but uh, if you uh, want to understand this um, better, actually, you can look at this classification of uh, Feynman SPT classification in one dimension. So in one dimension, the story is much simple. We only have complex Feynman declaration, uh, which requires this DN1 with zero. Uh, but uh, with non trivial omega 2 extension, this uh, two co cycle equation also have a twist. Uh, and this twist effect is just omega 2 uh, couple N1. And uh, you will see if this is also non trivial uh, co cycle uh, in H of 3, then this, uh, this equation has no solution. So it's an obstruction. So you will see this obstruction just exactly becomes this uh, gamma 3, becomes a new type of. Uh, uh, co-boundary transformation in Fermat systems. Yeah, and also if you Im include this so-called invertible top topological order, uh, then you can modify this DN1 to equal to omega-2. So then you will see also see this uh, additional trivialization, uh, which corresponding to this uh, um, boundary declaration of Majoran chain. So if you relate to, to uh, this to the data in one dimensional lower, then you have much bound, a better understanding of this gamma two and gamma three. Uh, so yeah, but I don't have time to discuss it in more detail. Uh, so let me uh, just uh, go to the three dimensional and uh, uh, then uh, briefly summarize. Can I ask a quick question? So yeah, uh, yeah, how, sure. do, how do I see this is complete if we don't have any knowledge about like spin couple design? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just a uh, 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 construction. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just like uh, uh, the uh, two-dimensional bosonic case. Uh, such kind of construction does not guarantee the uh, completeness. But uh, um, uh, once you have a construction, uh, you can you can you can ask uh, whether it's complete or not by using other method, uh, like uh, studying this gradient statistics or computer this spin cobordism. And uh, if they all match, then you can claim this construction uh, is uh, kind of uh, complete. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so far all these calculations they just match. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you more example later. So now let me uh, go to this three dimensional case. Uh, so the physical idea is very similar, but uh, uh, this uh, construction is rather complicated, so I don't go to the detail uh, here. Uh, again, we can uh, define this uh, uh, N1 is uh, belong to this H1, it's a cohomology class, and the N2, N3, new 4 they are just a cold chain here and it satisfies some generalized. Uh, Cycle condition, I will show you here. Uh, so, physically, this N1 layer is corresponding to the additional P plus IP uh, uh, civil conductor declaration if, uh, if GB is uh, anti uniform Because if it's unitary, you will see uh, it's always zero. There's no declaration. Uh, and starting from the second layer, just uh, this uh, usual Majoran chain declaration. And the N3 is a complex Feynman declaration. And the new four, just uh, this usual uh, bosonic SPT layer. And uh, uh, this obstruction function, which define this uh, generalized cohomology class for N2, new, N3, and N4 can be found here. So this O5, the detailed formula is quite complicated, so I just don't show you the explicit formulation here. Uh, so for uh, uh, 
yeah, D DN two and D uh, DN three, uh, you will see still take this very nice uh, couple product form. And uh, also, there's some additional trivialization. And this is trivialization you, you will see, uh, they actually comes from the obstruction from the uh, two plus one D case. If we go back to the two plus one D case, we will see some obstruction function here. Yeah, that's obstruction. Um, but because, uh, uh, as I mentioned, in principle, on the boundary of the three plus one D, we can also decorate some invertible uh, uh, phase like P plus IP superconductor. So there's some additional data contributed from the N0. So N0 representing this uh, uh, P plus IP state, uh, which is uh, um, decorated on the boundary of the uh, three plus one D phase. And it will trivialize some additional uh, from an SPD phase. So, so we, we will see this gamma two, gamma three is a generalization of the previous uh, obstruction function in two plus one D. And uh, gamma four, uh, it's also contains this O4. And also there are some additional piece, uh, which is rather complicated. And uh, so far for this piece, we even don't know its explicit formulation. Uh, okay, so now uh, let, let me just give you some example. But uh, yeah, for all the non-example, we find that uh, this gamma four N zero always uh, vanish, so we don't bother with this piece data. And all these data, they are precise, so we can do the computation. Uh, so for example, we compute some finite group, and uh, we indeed find some non-trivial uh, example if we consider the GB equal to Z4 cross Z4 or Z2 cross Z8. We can have a non-trivial Majoran chain decoration. And physically, uh, if we gauge in this global symmetry, uh, for example, Z4 cross Z4, Z2 cross Z8, uh, uh, then we will find an interesting new topological phase. And uh, it can be uh, uh, detected by, by studying this uh, uh, link, the uh, loop. For example, we have a Z4 loop here, Z4 loop here, and we will see that uh, for this uh, linked loop, a, Majana, a pair of Majana modes uh, will be trapped on this linked loop. Like in this cartoon, you can imagine uh, each of the loop uh, trapped the on uh, trap uh, one Majorana mode. So uh, this is a very unique de detection for such kind of a new topological phase in three plus one D. And uh, of course, we can also generalize our classification scheme uh, into a uh, space group SPD phase by just uh, simply applying this so-called crystalline equivalence principle. Uh, basically, we map this mirror symmetry to anti unity symmetry and map a spin one half system to spin zero system and uh, vice versa. So here is just a combination for this uh, uh, wallpaper group uh, for spin one half electron uh, in two plus one D yeah. yeah, for two D system. Um, uh, may I interrupt a little bit? Uh, is it possible for you to wrap it up uh, to finish? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's my last page. Uh, sorry. Yeah, okay. sorry for that. Uh, so uh, finally, I will just mention this uh, lead group symmetry. Uh, so it turns out that uh, uh, with our formulation, if we're replacing G uh, and BG and using the so-called Borel cohomology, uh, we can also um, uh, uh, we can we can also compute the uh, the classification for Lie group. For example, we can compute this tenfold way, and we find all these results uh, exactly the same as the previous calculation by using spin cohomology. And uh, uh, the potential reason is because uh, uh, in a recent uh, unpublished paper by uh, Chen Rui and Men uh, and Shang Chang, uh, they, they show actually this domain wall decoration uh, scheme is equivalent to this uh, Atia uh, Hertzbrook uh, spectrum sequence. And uh, this kind of spectrum sequence also apply for uh, Li group. Uh, so uh, yeah, so in summary, uh, we construct uh, and classify uh, SPT phases uh, for interacting Fermat systems uh, in 3D with arbitrary uh, Fermat symmetry GF. And uh, uh, all three dimensional topological phase in interact Fermat system actually can be realized by gauging a certain Fermatic SPT states. Yeah, that's a conjecture by uh, Tian and Xiao Gaoman. So uh, if this is true, then we believe that our construction also give rise to all possible uh, Fermatic topological order in 3 plus 1D. And also according to this uh, crystal uh, crystal equivalent principle, our scheme can also be uh, applied to classifying point group or space group SPT. So finally, uh, there's a very interesting observation that uh, uh, for, for the new type of uh, um, 
topological phase we discovered uh, yeah, from this uh, declaration of Maran chain uh, construction. Uh, actually, we find this, uh, um, if we regard this tiny link the loop uh, attached by Maran zero mode as an elementary particle, then there's a very natural explanation for the three generation. Uh, and also we can provide a semi-classical calculation for the mass mixing matrix for neutrinos, and which is intrinsically close to the experiment results. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, um, thank you for a nice talk. Uh, for, for the time uh, reason, so uh, let us just uh, have one question. So then uh, for the rest question, we can move to the uh, uh, discussion section. So anyway, any questions? I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. so, from your construction, how do we derive the staking law of different phase? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Okay. Uh, so uh, from your construction, so how do I see the staking law, the group structure for, for the SPD phase? Oh, the group structure, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So in 2 plus 1, the, uh, uh, yeah, the group structure is rather complicated, but in, in, uh, but in principle, uh, our, construction, our construction can uh, compute this uh, uh, brutal force. Uh, yeah, you can just adjust it by stacking two of this uh, SPT phase. Uh, then you can check this uh, uh, new data for, for example, we have, yeah, let me give you the example of two plus one D. Yeah, if you stack in this uh, uh, two N2 and N2 prime, then you can get some, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, first let me just say, we're stacking N1 uh, and N1 prime, then we can get some new data of N2. And then we can we we we, we can also stacking n two and n two prime we get some new data of uh, uh, new three, but uh, but uh, but uh, uh, they when when you stacking these data there could be some additional twist so in general it's uh, uh, not easy to compute but uh, but uh, but for a particular example uh, we can still compute it explicitly so that's why we can find the group structure uh, in this particular example. Yeah, so here, like for this space group, for a very generic case, we only don't know the total number. We don't know the group structure so far. Thank you.